the lights clicked off guys i'm not joking it like just no lights yeah i never peed and wiped and pulled up my pants and ran so quickly in my life this episode will contain some talking about um satan worshipping and um also self-harm or not self-harm suicide um so if you don't want to be here for that then i would suggest you click out of this video hello guys and welcome to supernatural saturday if you are new here uh we talk about everything supernatural supernatural events that have happened throughout history and modern day and i usually do my makeup at the same time but today is a little bit different because today i'm going to be telling you guys about my own paranormal experiences throughout my life and i thought i'd just grab a comfy chair sit back relax tell you my story and just chill a bit with each other and let you guys know where I'm coming from, why I started my YouTube channel, why I believe in these things and why I feel like I want to tell other people about the paranormal and that it's real. My parents lived in a flat with my brother for a couple of years and when I was born they lived there for like three weeks. But there was a lot of paranormal experiences going on in this flat. Um, they have a theory that the person who lived there before them uh, used to be a Satan worshipper because um, the, the house is built like basically into a mountain. So one of the walls where um, there is like a patio kind of thing and like one of the walls or uh, like the rock um, is a part of the mountain. So the house is built like into the mountain and um, there was a bunch of like melted candles and stuff that was melted into the wall as if there was rituals performed there also my father was pushed um, into the bed the one night uh, he was strangled a couple of times and yeah um, he didn't have great experiences there um, and then the three weeks later my parents moved out of this flat God, the dogs Now for my luck, they're going to keep barking. Always when you want to film. I guess I'm going to try and talk over the dogs that bark because they are not going to stop anytime soon. So I hope you can hear me. Maybe I should just put my mic a bit closer. Okay. I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear this. Um, okay. So anyway, when I was about three weeks old, my parents moved out of this flat into their first home. So what happened was my mom was busy changing my diaper and my brother came up to her and he was talking to somebody behind him and he was like, come on, come on, they're right in here, they're right in here. But there was nobody with him. So my mother said to him, who are you talking to? And he said to my mother, it's grandpa, he came to visit um, my sister. Um, mind you, my grandfather died a couple of months prior to me being born. Um, so he died, I think, the October, and I was born the June. So this was around about the July-ish. Well, I mean, I was born the 2nd of June, so it was like in June, beginning July. So he was dead for like <laughs> several months. Um, my brain doesn't want to math right now. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, uh, and then my mom's like, okay, and she's like playing along. She's like, okay, um... And my brother's like, yeah, grandpa's wearing a brown suit. And my grandpa's favorite suit was a brown suit. So the fact that my brother like said that kind of rattled her a little bit. When I was seven years old, my father had an affair with a Satan worshiper. And um, yeah, after that, the house was never the same. Um, I remember when my dad was out at night, my mother would um, like, do the whole breaking bread and drinking well we drank juice but we did that every night my brother put oil on the doors and all that stuff um it was quite intense um there was a lot of activities going on my mother is not one to like truly genuinely believe in these things like she knows it's there but she has that thing where she says that if you give it power like you say that it exists then you give it power over you so each to their own but yeah my brother uh he oiled the doors and window frames and all that stuff we read bible like every single night um one day my mother went to go look for my father in the bar um because
because that's like that was the hangout spot you know and when she got there this woman was there mind you she was engaged to be married with another man and she was there and when she saw my mother she lashed out and um, my mother being my mother <laughs> taunted her and she went and sat on the edge of the pool table and she said I have the right to be here um, I'm a customer and um, nobody's going to chase me out because the people in the wall like said to my mom you have to leave and she's like I'm not gonna leave why should I leave why can't she leave this woman started like literally growling like a lion and it took three men to try and put her down she ripped the um, the blinds off the wall from like going crazy and then the guy that she was engaged to said just pull a cross on her head and she she passed out she passed out i shit you not my mother witnessed this with her own eyes years later i um sort of becoming friends with the guys uh the guy who she was um engaged to be married to i became friends with his daughter and we were talking about like this experience and she said at night they was, would see like little creatures and stuff dancing in their ceiling um and it badly affected her brothers as well so um yeah after that the house was never the same um i, I didn't realize it at that time because i didn't have the intuition yet but a couple of years later when i was around 14 i started noticing more things so when i was about 14 my brother got a girlfriend and his girlfriend stayed like in another like city so she came to stay with us living in the windy house um outside of like in the back of the house we had a windy house it used to be my dad's office and then we made it into a flat the dogs are going crazy again anyway so then we made it into a flat him and her lived there for a while and um weird stuff started happening one night he walked outside the door it was like a double glass door and he walked outside and there was a curtain in front of the door but he just like walked through the curtain and then he suddenly felt like he walked through something icy like he just got like his whole body went like cold and it wasn't a cold night outside it was just like that area that he walked into was like freezing and then when he like walked a bit further it was like gone so he came back into the room and the same thing happened so he sat on the edge of his bed took out his phone and he took a picture over his shoulder three three pictures and in these pictures i will try and get them and if i do get them i'll post them on instagram probably but right now i don't know where they are my brother is not like close to me at this point so I can't ask him for it but I will definitely contact him and ask him if he has it somewhere I know that the laptop that it was stored on has been like broken in the process so I don't know if it's somewhere I think it should be somewhere if I find it I'll post it on Instagram anyway so these three pictures had a clear figure it looked like I, I want to say like a foggy misty kind of figure that was just like there and then everything around it was like perfect it was just like where the figure was it was blur so and that was creepy and also the girl that he was dating at the time she started drawing like really weird stuff um because my brother got like really into art at that point and this girl <laughs> started drawing like triangles with chicken feet underneath and an eye inside of the triangle and the sunrise above the triangle I can't remember everything but apparently all of these stuff are <laughs> all of these things are some kind of symbol involving like a satanistic ritual um this girl also uh has been haunted and i believe that she had an attachment now that i know a bit more i believe that she had an attachment to her um she did play um glossy glossy if you're not from south africa you probably won't know what that is but it's basically like the Ouija board okay so she played this as a kid and the next morning she woke up with three scratches over her back um yeah <laughs> so that was interesting um yeah so basically they broke up all that over and done with um after they broke up like a while I want to say like a year after they broke up 
I started feeling stuff. Um, I want to say it's like a sixth sense kicked in. Um, so, yeah, I think I was around 15 at this point. Um, I would get very scared in the house, especially in my bedroom and the bathroom. Um, I got like to the point where I would cry. I was a 15 year old teenager and I would cry to my mother. I'd be like, there's something watching me. There's something constantly watching me. When I'm in my room, I'm trying to get undressed or I'm in the bathroom, I want to bath. I feel like somebody's watching me constantly. Couldn't sleep at night, woke up at three o'clock in the morning the whole time. That was not the best experience. Um, a while after that, I started getting, it, it smelled like there was something burning in my bedroom. Um, and it was, it was really scary. It, like every single morning I would wake up and it will smell like something's burning. Like, you know, like when a fire is just dying, like if you, if you burn plastic and the fire is just like dying and it's just that like after smoke, that's what it smelled like. And it was really, it was creepy. There's a fly in my room. Also, at the time, when I would try to eat or drink something, it would smell like, like rotten eggs. Um, I was ill the whole time. I was tired. I was, um, basically, I was just drained. And it felt like I had energy for absolutely nothing. But as soon as I would leave the house or I would leave the area, that is haunting me, I'd feel better. But then as soon as I came back into the house, it would be back, you know? Um, okay, so then um, me and my husband, which who was my boyfriend at the time, uh, we went to go visit his family for the first time, um, or I visited his family for the first time. It's, it's quite far from us, it's about 10 hour drive. Um, so I went to visit them for the first time. They lived in a church, okay? So this is like a building that used to be a church and then it was next to their house that they used to own. So this church, they bought it uh, from when the church like closed down, they bought this church and they made it into a house. Um, weird stuff happened there I mean I know a lot of people would be like but it's a church how would a church be haunted I shit you not <laughs> and it's not just me that says this like my my mother-in-law also like she's like there is something in there it's not right um so that being said though um my husband's grandfather and grandmother's ashes are in there but I don't think that it can be that because there is something I want to say evil about that place, um, something that makes you feel uneasy. Like, it's one thing to be like, okay, there's a spirit somewhere, and then it's another thing to be like, okay, there's something here that wants to hurt me, there's something here that's making me physically ill. Also, um, one night, uh, my husband woke up, boyfriend at the time, and I was... <laughs> I was sitting over him, but I was sleeping, so I was like half laying, half like leaning. I was leaning like over him, looking at him, but I was forced to sleep. Um, so he woke up with my face in his face, looking at him. Sleeping. Just imagine how creepy that would have been for him, but okay. Sorry about that, I didn't know what I was doing, I was asleep. So then, around the same time, uh, we went to visit a friend of mine. Uh, she just like got a new boyfriend, we went to visit his house my first time being there, um, I just had a feeling that something was off. I kept hearing creaking um, and I just felt uneasy and that feeling that something's there, something's looking at me, this isn't right. I don't know how to explain it to you other than it's a gut feeling. Um, I don't know if you've ever sat somewhere and you could feel that somebody's eyes are on you, somebody's looking at you. That's exactly what it felt like. It felt like somebody was looking at me. And that's what it usually feels like when there is a presence nearby. So about like a couple of days later, actually, I think it was the next weekend. So a week later, they came to visit us. 
and um, my friend just randomly she's like I have to tell you something I'm like yeah she's like you were right and at this point honestly I forgot about like what happened and that I told her um, what I felt and I'm like what are you talking about I was right and she's like um, about the thing that's in the house I say to her oh okay why do you say that so basically what happened was um, a couple of nights after we left my hair is very irritating today a couple of um, nights after we left um, her boyfriend woke up and he saw a dark shadow peering at them from behind the cupboard um, and yeah so that creeped them out <laughs> uh, yeah so she thought I was a freak <laughs> Luckily, we're still friends, but yeah, um, she witnessed what I experienced, basically. And she witnessed the fact that I'm not just, like, talking out of my ass. It's things that have actually became came true, you know? So it's not just like, I'm like, oh, there's something here and then there's never anything. Like, it's usually that there actually is something. Um, okay, so at this time, uh, I forgot to mention, we were living in the Wendy house where my brother and his ex-girlfriend used to live. Um, because we didn't want to live in the house anymore. We were getting under my parents' feet. So I was like, okay, let's go live in the Wendy um, and get out of their feet, out from under their feet and all that, until we can get our own place. Um, so this one night, I fell asleep and... I was like basically you know when you like just fall asleep like you're just getting into that sleep uh, like you're still half awake you're still aware of your surroundings but you're asleep um so I just fell into a sleep and then all of a sudden I heard like whispering sounds but it was like a lot of whispers at one time it was like if that makes sense <laughs> so awkward doing that anyway um i woke up sat straight up in the bed and i told my husband boyfriend at the time something weird just happened like i heard something and he's like no man it's probably just the tv so we turn off the tv and i fall asleep again and this time i hear um laughter but like little kids laughing like <laughs> that giggling but once again it's like multiple it's not like just one kid giggling or it, like it's it's multiple giggles at the same time um and then woke up again told him again what the hell is going on this is weird this is creepy i don't know what's happening um at the time we had guinea pigs um and they were in cages in the next room over and i fell back asleep again and then i heard like pitter pat on the floor like almost like but it's a wooden floor, so it was a little bit more louder than that. And I say to him, shit, go check if the guinea pigs didn't get out of the cage. He, he stood up and he went to check, and the guinea pigs was in their cages. There was, like, nothing that could have made the sound. So it was three incidents that happened in the same night. And um, the next morning, his mother let us know that his grandmother died. So, if this was a premonition, what it was, I don't know. But this won't be the first time that something happens to me before somebody passes away. It has happened a lot. Um, I have felt guilty, in a sense, that I know that something bad's going to happen. And there is, like, something almost warning me that something bad is going to happen. But there's nothing that I can do about it, because I don't know... Who it's gonna happen to? I don't know what's gonna happen. I have no clue. I don't. I. I don't even understand this myself. So I'm just telling you guys my experiences. Do I understand it? No, not at all. So if you know, if you are more like spiritually connected or whatever, please let me know because I don't know. I don't. I don't understand it. But anyway, um, another instance. Uh, we were driving again to his parents' house. Like I said, it's a ten-hour trip. Um, on the journey, it was, we were going for New Year's, so it was a couple of days before New Year's. Um, on the journey, we passed through, like, a very long tunnel. It's, like, a very long tunnel. And when we came, um, out of the tunnel, I saw a truck, um, coming towards us. But I was laying, like, rec reclined in my seat, like, kind of half asleep, because it, we were driving during the night, because, um, 
we don't like to drive during the day because the journey just feels longer and there's more cars on the road, more traffic. So we usually like drove around, I want to say like four o'clock in the morning we would drive. Um, maybe even some, sometimes we would like drive at midnight. So I don't know exactly like what the time was at this point. But um, we just passed through the tunnel. I saw a truck come towards us. And for some reason, it felt like the truck was about to go over us. Um, like, literally, it felt like the truck was in our lane, about to go over us. And then as, the, as I saw this, the lights just went past us. Um, it freaked me out to the point where I sat up straight in the car seat and I bawled my eyes out because I just thought we were going to die. <laughs> And um, yeah, that was very scary to me. Um, and the thing is, I couldn't let it go. Something kept telling me there's something off, there's something off, there's something off. Um, because so many weird things has happened to me in the past, it bothered me. Um, and then when we got home, after New Year's, um, we came back home and um, I couldn't let it go. So I googled um, any accidents that might have happened on that road in the past because I thought maybe I was seeing what happened to somebody but that was not the case. Um, I think it was two days afterwards, basically it was on New Year's, a truck drove over a car on that same stretch where I saw it happening to us. Um, a truck drove over a car there was, I think, four people inside of the car, and everybody died. Um, needless to say, that was really scary to me. Um, and I know for somebody that's like just standing by, um, that maybe doesn't believe in these things, I know to you, I might sound like I'm freaking crazy, or like I belong in a mental asylum, but honestly, this happened. <laughs> I swear to you, this happened. And my husband is a witness, and there's a lot of people who have been witness to these things happening to me. Um, so, yeah, that, that creeped me out a lot. And then because of this, I tried to get more in touch with my spiritual self. I tried to get more in touch with, like, psychic, medium, like, tried to figure out what it is. But I didn't have anybody to, like, teach me or like tell me what's going on because I live in a very small town things like that is so taboo um, I did take I did buy some books of about um, like Wicca and I bought tarot cards stuff like that but it's different if you don't have anybody to like teach you you know like what's going on um, and like I said my family don't like believe in that kind of stuff um, or don't want to associate with that kind of stuff so I couldn't tell my mom either what was going on. Um, so the only person that knew was my husband, boyfriend at the time. Um, and he supported me because he also, he, he can he can like see spirits. He doesn't like have the same as me where I feel them or like I see stuff before it happens, but he can see the spirits. Um, so he believed me because like it's happened to him before also. Or not, not like that, but he's seen spirits before. So not long after this, we moved into our first flat together. Late one night, I was prepping meals for my husband because he was gymming at the time. And um, he was eating chicken and rice and it had to be cooked a specific way, you know, anyway. Um, so I was meal prepping for him. It was around about 12 o'clock at night. And um, I was standing by the island, so it was like... The kitchen on the one side and then there was like the kitchen island and then the, there was the dining room and um i keep scratching this piercing i'm sorry if it bothers you but it's irritating the hell out of me anyway <laughs> okay so i was standing in the kitchen looking over the island because the the bowls that i was putting the food in was on the kitchen aisle island so um i was like turning around putting the food into the bowls and then all of a sudden i saw an old man walking across um, like in front of the kitchen island this is the first time that I saw a ghost I'm very proud of myself but very scared also so yeah but I mean if I think back on it like I'm really happy that I can at least say that I did see a spirit before after that experience I wouldn't say that I had any like life-changing experiences for about two years I'd 
I'd say. About two years after that experience, um, we moved to my family's farm. Um, it was it's owned by my father's brother, and it was my grandparents' farm. They left it to my uncle, and my husband went to work on his farm. At this point, we were married. I was pregnant, and um, yeah, so he worked on the trucks. He was a long distance truck driver, and I was alone at home most of the time. His mother came to visit, uh, like right after we moved in, because I was at the end of my pregnancy and um, I was alone on the farm. I didn't have a license, so it was not um, a good idea to leave me alone. So his mother came from um, where they stayed. She flew down to us and she stayed with me for, I, I want to say a month actually. So um, we have two cats and uh, if you've ever moved with a cat, you know that um, cats run away, they try to find their home, like where they came from. So we had to close the cats in the house for at least like two weeks, you know, because they will run away and it's on a farm, they have so many opportunities to get lost. So all the windows in the house was permanently closed. And um, these windows worked in a weird kind of way where um it's like a steel piece and then there's a little thing that you screw closed to keep it open okay if that makes sense so the one night i woke up and i had to go to the bathroom my mother-in-law was sleeping in the living room and i woke up and i wanted to go to the bathroom and then suddenly i saw that my room's window was open this was strange because like i said the cats were supposed to stay in the house Nobody opened windows, especially not in my room, because I was in my room. I was the only one in my room who would open a window. My mother-in-law knew that the cats had to stay inside. So how did the room window open? Because it was closed on latch. It's like a steel latch that you like latch it with. It's an old farmhouse. It's like probably a hundred years old, okay? So <laughs> uh, I ran to the sitting room, to the living room where my mother-in-law was sleeping. And I literally stood there like this, across the hallway. I was so scared. I was like, what the actual fuck? Um, <laughs> I was really freaked out. Um, and I mean, as any person would be, also worried about the cats. My mother-in-law woke up from me standing there and I told her what happened. I go back into the room, I kid you not, the window is closed, closed and latched. It was open a minute ago, the curtain was literally like blowing like freaking crazy and the window was open, like open open. I could like feel the wind on my skin and then all of a sudden it's closed. So yeah. <laughs> Then, living there longer, I realized that, um, like, I could feel the presence of a child spirit. It was a little girl around the age of five, six years old. Um, so, I, like, felt the presence. I knew, like, the age of the presence, but I don't know why. I don't know how. I just know that I knew that she was around that age. Um, it's very hard to explain this thing that I have. It's, it's hard because I don't even know what it is. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so we lived there for a couple of months, I want to say. Um, I had my son, um, all that stuff. I was alone a lot in the house, but I didn't feel like the spirit was malevolent. Um, it scared me when it opened the window at first, but then like when I got to like know the spirit, I want to say, I got comfortable with her. Um, and... She didn't bother me. She was just there, you know, um, moving stuff around sometimes, like sometimes stuff will be on another place or whatever. But it didn't bother me as much um, because she didn't scare me. So I told my grandmother and my aunt about this whole thing, about the fact that I believe there is a child spirit in my house, all that stuff. They do not believe in ghosts. They were like, no, there is no way. You're being stupid, whatever. And for some reason, they ask me, oh, but what age is the child? And I say, she's around five to six years old. And my grandma goes, oh yeah, um, the one of the people that works on the farm, their daughter was like um, ridden over in front of the house um, in the road. Uh, she was like driven over and she died there. So I don't know if it can be that. I'm like, 
you just said you don't believe in spirits yet yet you're trying to give me like a reason for the place we wanted if you don't believe in spirits like explain to me so i don't know if the fact that i hit it the the, the nail on the head or the hammer on the nail or what the hell if he <laughs> whatever the phrase is i don't know if it's because like i got the age and everything right that they were like okay like this is too perfect or what it was but the fact that they like gave me a reason for it that was like mm, okay so you don't believe in ghosts um, <laughs> anyway just a little gloating there so then I'm getting into a very sensitive topic and it's very sensitive to me and my family um, and also other people so I don't want to go into too much detail about what happened after this whole thing that happened to me but I will tell you about what happened and what the after effects were um, so basically the one night I um, I went to go shower um, my husband was at home it was on a weekend it was a Saturday yes Saturday night I went to go take a shower and I could see like across from the bathroom was like the hallway and there was like literally just like a corner there there was a wall and then a corner like right across from the shower and my washing machine was standing there and um, I saw a dark figure standing in the corner like just a tall dark figure standing in the corner and I freaked the fuck out as any normal person would um, and I started crying like I just started crying because I felt so unsafe um, mind you um, I did say that I, I got a little bit more into like knowing about tarot cards and all that stuff um, a couple of years prior and I had crystals and all that stuff um, for protection um, also pentagram I know that a lot of people think that the pentagram is satanistic but that's actually like if you turn it around that the two spikes show upwards then it's satanistic because then it's like the the the, um, the horns um, but if the two spikes show downward and the one spike show up then it's for protection um, so just a little bit a heads up it's not satanistic if it depends on how the story is positioned anyway um so i got out of the shower i told my husband what's going on i immediately grabbed my crystals my crystal necklaces two of them and my pentagram and i put it around my um around my neck i got my tarot cords out to try and figure out what's going on i didn't really know how to read tarot cords the only thing that i knew is like a lot of people like you'd shuffle it and whatever card falls out is there for like like that's the universe giving you that card I guess and I started shuffling the death and the next moment the death card falls out now the death card doesn't necessarily mean that somebody's going to die the death card also means that um, something uh, is coming to an end there's a chapter to your life coming to an end or something like that so I wasn't too hot and bothered about it uh, it was a shock initially because it was the first and only card to fall out so initially it was a big shock but I didn't pay it any mind because like I said I didn't really know that much about tarot cards I was just fooling around with it and um, yeah the next day um, we were taking an afternoon nap my son was still very little at this point I'm going to try to tell this about crying um, my son was still a baby at this point and um, so we took the sleep that we could get and we fell asleep the afternoon and my mother calls me around I think it was four o'clock in the afternoon oh my god I don't want to cry right now um, she calls me around four o'clock in the afternoon and she says to me I have to tell you something and immediately I knew something was wrong and I sat up in the bed and she said to me um your friend is dead um and it was the it was my male friend that she was talking about 
and she said but that's not all um his fiance is dead as well um my brother was very close friends with them and i just like recently became friends with them um she did a lot for me she meant a lot to me in my life um the short while that she was a part of it um and they died in a freak accident um right the day after um the shadow thing was following me um and for some reason um i kind of blamed myself for a long time my puppy is crying i'm gonna go find my puppy i'll be back okay sorry um so anyway um i blamed myself for a long time because of this um I think the fact that I played with the tarot cards, the fact that I saw the thing and um, I felt like maybe it was because of me that it happened. Maybe it was because of, I was messing with stuff that I shouldn't have been messing with. Um, but I don't understand why that would affect them. Maybe it was just a freak accident and I just knew about it before it happened. I don't know. I don't know uh, what to tell you. I don't know. Um, I don't want to give too much information about the accident because, like I said, out of respect for the family, out of respect for my family, my brother and then, um, I don't want to uh, scratch open um, old wounds, if that makes sense. A while after this, I went to visit my parents in law. Um, during COVID, they moved to um, a farmhouse. So they moved out of the church to a farmhouse. Um, and they, um, because my father-in-law has lupus and my mother-in-law has um, melanoma, skin cancer. So they were like very high risk for contracting the virus. Um, so they moved to a farm like in the middle of nowhere. Um, the house is like fully off the grid. It is like, I think freaking, it, it's it's very old house. Big family that lived there um, in the house. Uh, they all died from the Spanish flu uh, on the property and uh, one of the little girls graves is also still on the property uh, yeah <laughs> then the other thing that is quite scary about this house is that there was a man that lived there and he um, he was also a farmer and the one morning he um, went to go look at his cattle. Uh, he went to go look um, how they were doing because it was very cold. When he got to the place that the the, um, the animals were, they all died. Um, it was his whole livelihood. He didn't have anything other than that. It was like literally all he had. It was all his finances, everything. So he walked back up to the house pulled up a chair and he shot himself in the head um the pile of the, the the blood is soaked into the wood so much that they've painted it they've it keeps coming up uh if you walk there you can like literally see like it's a big like circle of blood um he was apparently like he was there for a while because the form was so like the form is like quite a while out of town so there wasn't really anybody close by so i believe that he like kind of decomposed there as well um this house is very haunted uh one night i fell asleep or well i mean duh. <laughs> i was staying there for a month um but one night i was asleep and i woke up and i had sleep paralysis uh if you don't know what sleep paralysis is it's where you you're awake, but your body can't move, you can't scream, you can't do anything. Like, your body is asleep, but your mind is awake, and you can see everything that's going on around you. Um, so I woke up in a state of sleep paralysis, and I saw somebody coming into the door, walking around my bed, and going to the window. I tried to scream, but I couldn't scream and like suddenly i was just asleep again and then suddenly i was awake again 
and I heard the footsteps behind me and um, I couldn't scream, I couldn't move, I couldn't do anything and um, yeah, it just, yeah, <laughs> so I fell asleep again and then in the morning when I woke up it was like, was this a dream, was this real, what happened, you know. Um, but now that I'm looking like back on it, it was definitely real. It definitely happened. Uh, after this, we moved from the farm. We moved to where my parents in law were staying because there was some issues with the work and all that stuff. Uh, so we moved to my husband's parents. Uh, we lived in the church then that, that they were living in before they moved to the farm. So we lived in that church. Uh, we lived at the area that was like the kids church. So, like, it, it, it's quite a big church, like, the one side was um, for, like, church, and the other side was, like, the kids' church. So, we lived in the side that was the kids' church, and um, we, it, it was, it was, like, very chilled on that side, but on the other side, however, it was the, <laughs> not so chilled. Uh, there's also, like, a cabinet in there. I don't I have no idea like what the story is behind the cabinet but even my mother-in-law she is scared of this cabinet um, because it she had it next to a bed the one time and she said she couldn't sleep at night at all your teeth is very sharp your teeth is very sharp you're going to bite my fingers off anyway <laughs> so she said that she put this cabinet next to a bed at a certain stage and she couldn't sleep when it was next to her bed she kept waking up she kept like smelling rotten stuff same as me kept smelling rotten stuff mind you my mother-in-law also sees spirits um so her mother saw it she sees it and my husband sees it and she um told my father-in-law like this cabinet there's something wrong with this cabinet i couldn't sleep when it's next to my bed so then uh, my father-in-law said no you just like being silly all that stuff and then she um one day she was just cleaning and she decided okay so she put the cabinet in front of my father and it was a bed without telling him and then the next morning he's like i don't know why but i couldn't sleep last night and something smells rotten and all that stuff and she's like yeah i didn't tell you that i put that cabinet next to your bed so yeah that thing was like pretty freaking haunted uh i did film uh in there if you go back to my like Pre, like my first couple of videos I made those while we were living in that house uh, with the red background so that was on the haunted side that I was filming and the one day I was filming and something fell over next to me and there was nobody there and when I checked what fell over there was nothing like nothing fell over it was just like a crash like something fell over but nothing fell over um, also the cabinet w was on that side, they left the cabinet on that side, and my, my, my husband's grandparents' ashes was on that side, and the cabinet door just like randomly opened by itself, stuff like that, it was creepy, it kept feel feeling like somebody's watching you, it was not nice, <laughs> it was not nice, uh, one day I was vacuuming the house and the vacuum cleaner like shut off, by the wall, by the wall, it's not like the vacuum cleaner mal malfunctioned or anything, the wall plug went off. I had to literally click back the wall plug. One night also, my husband was out with his brother. And it was like very late at night. I stayed up because I can't sleep um, if I'm home alone. Uh, so I stayed up until they came back. And I went to the bathroom. So the bathroom was in our bedroom. And um, I went to the bathroom. So the, the lights uh, for the bathroom is where you come into the room. Is the lights for the bathroom and the bedroom. So I clicked on the lights, walked through to the bathroom, and then just as I went to sit on the toilet, the freaking lights clicked off. The lights clicked off, guys. I'm not joking. It like just no lights. Yeah, I never peed and wiped and pulled up my pants and ran so quickly in my life. So we moved uh, away from there about. Ow, your teeth are sharp. Don't bite my nipples off. My dog just almost pierced my nipples. Anyway, um, so we moved from there um, a couple of months ago um, and moved into this house. Okay, so I asked my mom when um, I started my YouTube, I asked my mom to get me creepy dolls for my background. My mom works in a thrift shop. 
So I asked her to get me creepy dolls uh, for my background. So I got that doll. And then there's another one hanging on the wall. If you watch my other videos, you will see her on the wall. And that candlestick. And those books. All of those came from the thrift shop. Okay. This typewriter was my husband's granny's typewriter. But she didn't really use it. So I don't really think that that's an issue. Um, anyway. After I took them out here and started like my forming room. Suddenly. Suddenly. Weird shit started happening in this house. The one night I woke up and I just heard like a scratching noise on the balcony door, like by the balcony door. And like I woke up and I saw that the curtain was like blowing, like outside. And then I stood up and I saw the balcony door was open. The balcony door was open and going <laughs> against the cement. Um, I am like very hectic about closing my curtains properly at night. I don't want anybody looking into my house. But I close my curtains every night. Before I go to sleep, I close my curtains properly. I lock everything properly also. That's why I don't understand how that balcony door could have been open. Because I lock everything. It has a hinge at the top, a hinge at the bottom, and then it has a, a lock. You tell me how it opened. You tell me, please. Anyway... <laughs> So, uh, the one morning I also walked down the stairs and like right in front of my staircase there was a window and the curtain of that window was pulled open and hooked onto the like curtain rail hook thing. Um, I did not do that. Uh, one night me and my mom went to the shop. Uh, there's like a shop down the street from me. So we went to the shop to go buy some, st some things and I left my um, upstairs bathroom light on and that's the bathroom that like looks into the street you can see from the street and I looked up at the house and there was a black shadow like passing um, in front of the window uh, like I said the reason I could see it was because the lights were on I came into the house looking ow I'm going to pull your teeth out I'm going to pull your teeth out your teeth are sharp anyway um, so I I'm just gonna sit like this because she is killing my hand here and the other night not too long ago um i woke up at three o'clock in the morning i heard a noise woke up at three o'clock in the morning and the bedroom the closet the closet door was open like wide open like literally open um like i said nobody touched it there was nobody near it when i walked into the room the cupboard door was closed everybody was asleep nobody touched it I think the reason why I woke up was because I heard the cabinet door open. So, there's that. Um, anyway, guys, that's basically my life story to this point of uh, my haunted experiences. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these videos. Um, and also tell me if you like the story format or if you like the makeup story format better. Um, I just did this today because... <laughs> I don't know, I just didn't feel like doing my makeup while telling my own story. I don't know why, it just felt weird to me. Um, sorry if today was a bit more serious. And yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate that too. And I will see you guys with my next video. Bye!